Hi. Now, you might find this a bit strange, but I'm here to tell you that there is only one football club in the country that everyone should follow. No, it's not Melbourne, it's not Carlton or North Melbourne, and it's not even the Swans. It's the club that's kicked more goals than any other. Hasn't missed many in his entire career, and that kick is a goal. It's the Australian Football Video Club. There's Western again with a hand pass coming over to Watson. This could be another goal, it is. It's the only club that gives fans everywhere exactly what they're after. <laughs> hours and hours of your team in action. It clears the pack. Here's Grant. He's shoved over. Now Tony Free. Oh, good, and the foot goes free. Oh, he's kicked a great goal. Fantastic footage of football's favourite sons. The would-be's, the could-be's, the has-been's, the could-have-been's, the yippee-beans. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> what a character. We're a one-man band down there. <laughs> it's all here and much, much more when you join the greatest club of all, the Australian Football Video Club. There's no joining fee and you can get your first video for $20 if you join right now. Check the details on the catalogue that's with this video or call 1800 035 665 now. The Australian Football Video Club. It's a ripper. This is Classical Footy, a video with all the classic action you could ever imagine, captured and set to classical music. Capture your copy at these stores now. There is about the game of football something that touches every beating heart. And there is something for every Australian man, woman and child in this living video history. A hundred years of Australian football on video. It's yours to keep forever at these stores now. Twice Dennis Pagan was cruelly denied the mantle of grand final coach. Twice North Melbourne was eliminated in the penultimate final. Late on the afternoon of Saturday, September 28th, all the bad times, the bad luck, could be forgotten. So join in the chorus and sing it one and all. You'll agree, North Melbourne is the team that plays to win for you and me. Let's meet Pagan's heroes. Firstly, number two, Wayne, Wayne Swap. Swap. Number seven. 
seven, Dean Lately. Number eight, Number eight Robert, Robert Scott. Scott. Number 10, Number 10 Anthony, Anthony Stevens. Stevens. <laughs> Number, 11, Number 11, Glenn, Glenn Archer. 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 <laughs> Number, 12, Number 12, John, John Blakey. Blakey. Number 16, Number 16 Matthew, Matthew Capuano. Capuano. Number 17, Number 17 Glenn Freeborn. Number 22, Number 22, Mark, Mark Roberts. Roberts. <laughs> Number 24, Number 24 Craig, Craig Shaw. Number 26, Number 26 Peter Bell. Peter Bell. Number 27, Number 27, Darren, Darren Rocker. Rocker. Number, 31, Number 31, Corey Nakana. Now would you welcome Hello, North Melbourne North coach, North coach Dennis Pagan. Dennis Pagan. If I could just if say, a, just quick, say uh, a quick, uh, uh, a quick uh, a thank, you thank you to Ross Smith, Ross Smith John, Longmire, John Longmire and Matthew Armstrong. Matthew Armstrong.
who are a huge part of this here today. And I feel for the boys. They're here, they're with us, and they're a part of it. North skipper Wayne Carey. And now, and now, a lap of honour from the 1996 AFL Coca-Cola Premiers, North Melbourne. North Melbourne. North Melbourne. North Melbourne. This was the signal for the celebrations to begin. A week of festivities that spread from the dressing rooms deep in the great southern stand. today happened because of a reason and when you look back it was four years ago um, the way our guys have prepared themselves and grown and matured as men and footballers um, uh, and sometimes to uh, as a result of a heartache a loss here or a loss there and to come today the MCG and win the way we did um, certainly does the North Melbourne Football Club proud you know there are a lot of lot of people who'd like to uh, uh, maybe not see uh, North Melbourne be successful. Um, there's no way known they're going to hold us down. We're too determined, we want to be successful, and we are going to be successful. To the Melbourne Function Centre for the post-match ball. Coaches of the quality that we have, and above all, young men of the type that you see on the stage here today, or tonight, who have won those two flags today, I believe the North Melbourne Football Club's future is assured. And we will continue to do it on our own. And there's just one thing I want to announce tonight, and I, want to, and I want everyone to listen to this. The North Melbourne Football Club is going to merge. They're going to move, merge with our seconds. Dennis <laughs> Pagan, ladies and gentlemen. To a city bar on the Monday. Oh, the dark. That's a good thing. Hey, that's a good <laughs> yeah. So is yours. <laughs> One of the greatest things you've ever experienced? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You know, it's just a dream come true. And um, yeah, it was just a fantastic experience. People are always saying, is it sunk in yet? Has it sunk in yet? 
Uh, yeah, I think I think this morning, you know, I woke up and you know, with all the uh, the photos of the boys in the papers and that type of thing, it really is just starting to think about sinking. Yeah, I mean, it's taken 20 years for me to uh, to uh, play in anything like this, and I mean, it's pretty indescribable. Hopefully, uh, the boys uh, and myself don't get too carried away because I wouldn't I wouldn't mind winning another one. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty pretty emotional time for everyone because all the boys here are very good friends and uh, practically growing up together and um, you know, I think that, that really makes it special. Just listening to Croc before, I'd, I sort of don't think it's sunk in fully yet. I think every now and then it hits you. Just this morning we got here at about quarter to nine and just sitting there thinking, geez, you know, we've won the Premiership. And I think That'll probably happen over the next few days and, and then I think it'll hit you. What did it mean to you, like, holding that cup up? Do, do you remember your thoughts at the time? Oh, just uh, disbelief more than anything. It was just uh, a dream come true, not only for myself, but for everybody. You know, I suppose everyone's... It's the ultimate to play in the grand final and just uh, to hold it was just unbelievable. Yeah. Six nights later, North officially ended the year with the counting of votes in the best and fairest. The winner, a surprise to no one. The centenary season of the AFL had been like no other before it. To begin the North Odyssey, we have to go back into wintry February. A newfangled innovation, the Lightning Premiership, held in Arctic conditions at Waverley. In the opening match, North had pipped Melbourne by a point. Scholl kicking two of the Ruse three. In the first quarter, North bowed out to Collingwood, and the players enjoyed the hot showers like never before. There was an Ansett Cup campaign. North Melbourne had the visa stamped twice as they trekked around the country. First up, Sydney in Canberra on Federal Election Day. Lockett kicked eight, but North had the firepower to cover everything he could throw at them. The Ruse by 22 points. On to Brisbane for the fourth quarter final. This time it would be Brett Allison who'd kicked five goals. North coming back from a four-point deficit at the last change to win by 15 points. Carey and Longmire were out injured for the semi-final against Carlton at Waverley. The load would fall on the shoulders of Corey McKernan. The reigning day premiers controlled the game from the start. Many were talking about Carlton's hopes of back-to-back -back premierships already. North down by 28 points. The AFL centenary season would be arguably the most memorable ever. We would be treated to a feast of footy-related distractions. There would be the ball. 3,000 people packed into the marquee on the MCG. So join in the chorus and sing it one and all. Join in the chorus, North Melbourne's on the ball. Good old North Melbourne, the champions you'll agree. North Melbourne will be premier. The Hall of Fame would induct its first 100 members and North's greats would be honoured. Amongst the men who had played, coached or run the ruse were Tom Fitzmaurice, Wells Ike, Johnny Lewis, Alan Aylett, Les Foote, Malcolm Blight, Barry Cable, Gary Dempsey, Russell Ebert, John Rantel, Doug Wade, Premiership coach Ron Barassi, President Ron Casey, and former coach John Kennedy. North Blood had one new player for the opening match of the season, 20-year-old Peter Bell from Fremantle. Round one, and the night premiers St Kilda at Waverley. Bell kicked four on debut, somewhat making up for the loss of Longmire with the knee. North defenders, Capiano again cleans up to North. Over the top, good, well, clean bowls down to Waitland. There's now a chance for Carey. Should be a goal, but well, great vision by Carey. Straight to Pell. Should be a certain goal for North. And it is. Carey in front gets another position. This time it's a punch towards his own goal from the throw-in. Kicked off the ground by his teammate. Now it's a chance for Bell. Can give it to Stevens and does. Stevens gets balanced, shoots, and puts it through straight through the middle for a great goal. 
It comes to Anthony Stevens, a hurried kick out of the middle, short of the 50. Here's Mark Stevens, number 38. Came from Gippsland Power in the under-18s. North work it well. The hand pass forward to Bell. A centering kick to Archer on the edge of the square. Caught behind. He's got a chance. A snap is good! Good goal by Archer. Kick by McKernan. It was a kick and hope just up in the air. And Carey's there. The ball was touched on the way to him. Play on to the umpire. Allison. The hand pass to Bell. 40 metres out. Open goal. Peter Bell. Away goes the ex Mantle docker. And gets the goal for North. One of the youngsters, good to see. Armstrong, quick ball to Blakey. Windmars direct opponent now. King very, very fast. A couple of bounces. Could go all the way. But good vision. Very good. Straight to Scholl. Too easy. Over the top. Peter Bell. And that's his third goal. Inaccurate kicking had the ruse down at three-quarter time by a point. But the five-goal last quarter turned things around nicely. Moved to the forward line from that half-back line. He's kicked the goal in that third quarter. Bouncing ball. Oh, good play to Bell. Dodges one. Here's a chance now. Campbell to Roberts. Slopes into the goal square and puts it straight through the middle for the moves. Archer taking a bit of a scream and then looking for a 50. And finding it. Archer kicking in long with McKernan in front. One hand. Craig Scholl running into an open goal. There it is for the Kangaroos. That's well. Ball knocked to the front, comes back to Anderson, his hand pass is blocked, Scholl doing a top job, Waitman, bang, down he goes, it comes North's way, Roberts gets it to the goal line for a goal. Still a chance for the Saints, but well done by Scholl again on the forward line, Carey one out with Shanahan, he gets rid of him, Carey gets about his first kick for the second half and goals. But it's tough now. Two minutes, 23 left. Peckett, short kick across the ground is dangerous. Anderson under the pump. Stevens the hand pass away. Bell for number four. Open goal square. And he's done it. What a big day he's had in his first day for North Melbourne. The game was costly. Wayne Schwash broke his forearm in two places. The star in a four-goal win, Corey McKernan. Oh yeah, I suppose that was, when you look back at it now, it was probably what, one of the hardest games that we did have for the year. St Kilda come like, sort of fresh off the night premiership and we sort of had to play a really good game in the end. I think in the third quarter St Kilda probably got ahead by three or four goals and uh, we had to really work hard to get our win. 30,000 at the MCG witnessed North belt Footscray in the Easter Saturday showdown. This was North at its most lethal. 15 goals to one at half time. All the Finish big the names firing. He's coming across from Fitzroy. The target all the time is Kerry. Here's McKernan can run in and kick a goal. So he kicks a long bomb. Kerry has the ball punched away. Crocker, a handy player, rockets the ball back. Chance for Freeborn. Inside 50. He's kicked it. North out to 2-2 now, and Footscray yet to score. Wind in the centre. Quick kick again by uh, Freeborn to Scholl. Could kick a goal. 40 metres out. He has. I'll have to be strong in defence today, Footscray. North Melbourne's got a star-studded forward line. Scholl rockets the ball back. Good play to Simpson, to Crocker. Outside, and he's popped it through from 40 out. To Anderson, all too easy at the moment. Well directed kick, Crock a good stretch. It's well played though by uh, Sir Armstrong, held up a little by West. Scholl getting kicks, goes to full forward. Carey one out. Well, he was about threes on in the run, wasn't he? It's uh, tucked away in the pocket, but he should go. They like it. He's got it. And Footscray uh, have lacked that out of the centre square. Anderson. Kick straight up the centre. That's a plan, no doubt, to Freeborn. Can run through the centre square. He's been an outstanding player. Kicks long, too far. Running onto the ball is the champ, and he's kicked it. Rocket about 50. Now, he's not a long kick. No one on the mark helps a bit. Gets to 45, can go right for goal. Kicks it. It's another one. 
and Footscray will be in the depths after this unless they can turn it around in the second half after being thrashed last week. Scott to Scholl. Scholl from 40 metres. It's raining goals. He's got two. So Grant there, number three for Footscray now in defence. North Melbourne have just been superb. Crocker has the ball punched away at ground level. Freeborn. Quick snap. It's raining goals at the G. Out wide to Freeborn. Now he's got Peter Bell inside, decides against it, goes long high. Kerry at his target. Oh, he rode the Kerry. This will be a fourth. This is going to sting again. Look at this one. Six goals to Wayne Carey. The final margin would be 131 points, the biggest in 126 contests between the two clubs in 71 years. The win put North on top of the ladder for the first time since round four, 1994. Craig Scholl kicked four and would earn the Brownlow votes. It's got it. Kicking over the man on the mark because it, it slows down the play. You see the quick hands from Blakey. McKernan. Terrific mark. Crocker has kicked two. So the four line, they're sharing it around, and Corey McKernan has drilled it. Stevens back to Simpson. Left foot. Scott, not quite. Romero. Scholl, they've got numbers here. Scholl should kick his third. He's only 25 metres out. He's got it. playing good form well you might have a spot Armstrong to Simpson to fall forward Grant Carey's got him he had probably the best position there yeah he took that one first touch 40 meters out directly in front it's got another one six for Carey King takes it away an outstanding North Melbourne defense up towards Osborne at the back Carey wins the ball back to Mark Stevens Kicks the ball to space. So that sir gets a bad bounce. Scholl grabs it. Can he kick goal number four? He has. It was a, a good day out. I mean, that was the first time that I've ever kicked, a, you know, more than one or two goals in a game. And it was, I mean, it was a good feeling. But I mean, on that day, our on ballers and that were just sensational. Our, we played so well. Our, the actual, as a team, you know, that was the first time for the year that I reckon we really played well as a team. And Fusco, who we always, you know, have a really hard game against which we always just expect that with them and they, they come out and we thought it was going to be a lot harder than what it was and it was good just to get a, you know, a few kicks from yourself. Back to Waverley and another one-sided romp, this time against Hawthorne. Again, Corey McKernan would be the imposing figure. There would be 14 different goal kickers. It was another magnificent performance and the side sitting undefeated on top of the AFL ladder. There it comes back towards Jenke, but Roberts runs into an open goal and suffers it through. Blakey, one of North's uh, one of better buyers in the last few years. McCurden to Stevens, confronted, kick up towards half forward, and Carey's got space. Marks outside 50, length that stands the mark. Needs to aim for the right goal post. Good kick distance wise. Crocker and Crumble, a little bit of a push. Crocker goes off the ground, or was it Scott? One of them's got the goal. Scott, but I think you're right. North down in the 80s, not so Hawthorne, but the roles have changed. Here's Martin on the wing, kicks inside the 50. Langford Carey behind McKernan in front, roving the pack eventually. Carey away to Scott from 52 metres out, vacant goal square. It bounces down towards Roberts, flicks it down to Bell. Too clever by half, they get the goal. Too easy. Stevenson told to play on. Awkward one for Graham, who didn't commit. Archer, well, that's improvising. Rock. Across to Allison alongside the centre circle, probing kick. Carey is one out, but that's a great mark with a greasy ball. Could have slipped across his chest. He pulls it to King right on the kickoff line. Well, King, point blank range. Kicks a major. The ruse by 73 points. It was North's sixth straight win over Hawthorne. Corey McKernan winning three more votes to make it seven in three games. He's been good. So too is McKernan. The only thing has let him down as he's kicking for goal. Bell to Allison. He always loves a goal. And marking a wet, greasy ball down there for North Melbourne. Doing it pretty well. 
is uh, Stevens. That's Mark Stevens. 14 North players have got goal, so we can't add to the list here. Looks like a Peter Hudson old flat punt. But effective. That was very tough again. I think by memory it sort of rained a bit during the day. As it, like at Hawthorne as usual, it was very hard for a game. Be very hard at the ball and we had to fight hard right throughout the day to get the three points. But um, as I said before, it's those sorts of games during the year that um, when you look back now, they're the games that sort of get you, get you the double chance and set you up for September. The road trip to the Gabba in 1996 took on new importance. The Bears suddenly looming as a very real Premiership contender. Round four saw the Roos start confidently in front of 17,000 fans. Six scoring shots apiece in the first term. North by a kick at half time. Situation. Carey from 20 metres out, directly in front. It's his second. So North there, last goal, three minutes into this quarter. McAdam under pressure. Roberts, well played. He'll kick a goal. He's got it. Clark and Capuano, Bartlett, taken away by Armstrong. Hart, who's had a quiet one. Bartlett tried to give it to Bues. Bill with another chance. High ball, close, it's very close, it might be a goal. Allison, left foot kick to full forward, knocked away. Both sides giving their all. Champion, can he be run down? No. Little left foot kick, out into the path of Chapman. Chapman gives away a bit of ground, back to champion, magnificent football by both sides, the kick towards the middle, and it's broken down because Kerry is marked, gives it to Capuano, now Armstrong. Goes for goal, long kick's going to be close, bouncing ball, might be through, it is. Looking for Dion Scott, Robert Scott at the back, to Armstrong, he kicked a great goal in the second term, Kerry the target, too good. Kicked a couple of goals in the opening term. This one from 30 metres out, straight in front. And Kerry's got his third. Bell to run on. Neat inside. Waits for Allison. Normally a fantastic finisher. Curling back. It's another one. It's through. The Bears by five points at the last change. A hamstring injury to Alistair Lynch hadn't troubled the Bears. Play swung Lepic into the action and he repaid their confidence with six goals. North goalless in the final term. The Bears by five goals. North suffer their first loss of the season. They missed it. Now Hart, that's a good give to Lappin. Straightens the body, could kick a long bomb. Hooks it to the pocket. Lepic back there. Oh, what a take. Plays on and kicks his fifth. For the second week in a row, the Roos were involved in a thriller. For three quarters against the undefeated Crows at the MCG, there was nothing in it. McKernan was invincible, be it in the ruck or around the ground. He was the telling factor. He'd kick four goals. Carey would boot five. 7-10 now for the Kangaroos. Some great football by the Crows through their midfield and across half forward, showing North and Melbourne how to do it. 5-1 leading 2-3. Now Robert Scott drives up forward. Carey and Smart. No one can mark Allison on the ground. Carey off the ground. Kick looks pretty good. Ball up 40 metres out. North in attack. Jarman gets the hand pass away, but it goes to Scholl. His shot for goal. Gets there. It's a great game here at the MCG. Adelaide Crows by 10 points. Inside a couple of minutes now, it's Allison. Here's another chance for Freeborn from inside 50. Kick looks pretty good. It's through. That's behind the centre circle. The kick up towards the 50. Carey and McKernan. And the mark to McKernan. And McKernan going for his second. That mark was his third. The kick's not bad. I think it's just there. Another one. Kerry hasn't been dominant all season. He's continuing a bit here today. He's having a tough time of it. McKernan, Kerry, a little hand pass. Allison, an open goal. Gets it. It's 
Stevens. North Melbourne defence are looking good. Scott now able to set it up through centre. Goes the bounce. Well shepherded by North Melbourne teammates. Carry on able to mark. Now Scott's a chance, a second time. Open goal. Great shot. Stevens for North. First blood for the second half. Carey goes on quickly. McKernan. This to level the scores again. What a game at the MCG. All tied up. North with an eight goal final term would win by 39 points. Ten scoring shots from Big Corey resulted in four goals six and three more Brownlow votes. Gary kicks his fourth. Pressure kick, high ball. Set up for Rusciuto. He's crunched. Armstrong gathers well to Stevens. Now Stevens gets a long kick to McKernan. North Melbourne looking pretty good. McKernan plays on quickly. Oh! What a jump. Now they're playing about 10 metres out, directly in front. Oh, and they slide out Puts it through. Gets his kick up towards centre wing for North Melbourne. Craig Schultz from half forwards had a great game for the Kangaroos today. Gets it around the corner, carries in front, can upload quickly. Smart was a bit too fast for him. Armstrong now delivers back to Scholl. Good follow-up by North Melbourne. Disciplined play. Lately, taking the marks being called. Play on. Gets rid of the handball. Now Scholl again. Followed up for his second possession in a matter of minutes. Now Corey McKernan has just taken a chess mark. Kick looks pretty good. Golden McKernan. Oh yeah, I suppose if I had a kick straight that day, I could have had an anything game. I think I kicked four goals, six in that game, and then probably two goals, six, I think, against Hawthorne as well. But um, I suppose that was our, one of our goals from the start of the year that we didn't really want to lose two in a row. I think we lost the previous game to Brisbane, and that was one of our team, team goals that we sort of set during the year that we didn't want to, want to lose two in a row. And it was really good to achieve it against Adelaide, who we were undefeated at the time, and we had a sensational win. 50,000 at the MCG on a Friday night saw North and Geelong fight out a torrid encounter. McKerner was in charge around the ground. He'd kick three goals as well. Carey would take 11 telling marks. At the moment it's OK. Punched down by McKernan. Simpson. Quick hand pass. Armstrong again. Archer. Six goals, no behind so far, three each. Archer keeps the record straight. North Melbourne's fourth, the Roos by six points. The refrigerator has got it. Roberts. McKernan, yes! Now, if he kicks this, it will certainly take away that sour taste in the mouth. So a goal would regain the lead for North Melbourne by three points. He kicks and he goals, North back in front. But North Melbourne coming again. Getting very dewy out there. Very hard for the players to gather it. Finally, Roberts. Good mark in front to Archer. Really make the most of the opportunities. Glenn Archer for his second. 20 metres out directly in front. And he kicks it first goal of the second quarter. Picked up by Matthew Armstrong. Goes for distance, finds Carey. Carey's at centre wing. Hasn't kicked a goal tonight so far. The Duck, been in defence a lot in the first quarter. Scholl, he's kicked two behinds. Craig Scholl, outside 50. Booming kick! Oh, look at that! What a kick! Tremendous goal! Falls to the advantage of Simpson. His hand pass, taken by Bell. Centering kick. Now a chance for Roberts off the pack, across his body, and kicks, and the fridge has dogged it. So Rock right on 50, 
It's one for the high flyers. Oh, and Wayne Carey at the back of the pack. That's taken a ripper. What a mark. So Wayne Carey, 10 metres out, kicks a goal. Now Scholl, clever handball, underground, intercepted by Kilpatrick. He gives it straight to Rock. Rock goes into it, full forward, and Martin, Mickey Martin. They'd love him to kick this, the Roo supporters. He might have sneaked it in. He has. It's a goal. Seven points up at the last change. The Roos would stretch that to 11 at the bell. But for North, it would be a costly win. For Corey McKernan, he would still be counting the cost in September on Brownlow night. You could call it a perfect pass as Bell has grabbed it 25 metres out from goal. He kicks, he likes it, and the goal umpire says it's there. Now the duck, maybe too far out for him, 65 to 70 metres, he's really launched into that one. Marking contest in the goal square. The hearing began just over half an hour ago with McKernan pleading not guilty to the misconduct charge. It's this incident in the opening quarter of Friday night's game that has landed McKernan in hot water. McKernan out for a week's suspension robbed the Roos of their most dominant big man for the crucial game against the Eagles in Perth. In beautiful conditions, the Eagles just hammered north. The big Blake was certainly missed as the Eagles ran away with a 67-point win. Kicked off the ground again, Lovell once more, takes it out of the pack, Downsborough, Matera on the burst, long up towards full forward, might be a goal, it is, it wasn't touched. It was brilliant in the first quarter, now Downsborough again gets ridden into the ground by the refrigerator, Roberts, kicks over half forward, Carey this time. He kicks, it's pretty good, he's got it, it's a goal. Now he can play on, no one's on the mark. So ball pushing and shoving, he's got it. He's too big down there for Ian Fairley. That's the first part of it. Gets it back to Matera. Matera with a heavy shepherd behind play, but Carey's got the mark. A long bomb from the north skipper, and that's just what Dennis Pagan would have asked for at halftime. Matera cleans up. Jakovic spirals it back. Terrific mark by Blakey. They might just have a ping at this from outside 50. This is a long bomb carry from behind. It's, it's gone through. He's kicked it. And yes, you're right. The Ruse defence has been under siege. And Stevens fumbles unaccountably, perhaps for the first time today. He's tried all afternoon. Trent Nichols across Peter Matera. Kicks to half forward. Anderson. Still he goes, Anderson. Out in front of goal. And Capuano gathers it nicely, runs it and puts it through for a major. McKernan returned for the Richmond match, nearly 50,000 at the MCG. The Ruse trailed at quarter time, but then moved steadily away. McKernan took another 10 marks and dominated the rucks. In attack, Darren Crocker was relishing his chances. He'd kick five. And he pops it through. Gaspar on the mark. Starting to bend back, and there's a mark on the line to Crocker. And they've lined him up with the centre of the goals. Yeah. This is only his third game this year, and he's kicked a goal. But Archer's kicked to half forward, punched by Turner. Tawny crashes through. Kerry hasn't taken a mark and has had just one kick so far. Chance for Crocker, he bounces it through. Out of defence, a high one by Scott. Punch forward by Prescott. Stevens bowled over. Two number 10s clashed there. Daffy got him. The crumbs come to Blakey. It was an advantage free kick. Blakey to half forward. Oh, McKernan. In the absence of Carey, McKernan really good there. Kick by McKernan. Crocker. Oh, good hands. Crocker for his third goal. 
And a bit of a break for North. Bell couldn't trap it. Scholl. Quick kick. There's a great snap. He's kicked a miracle goal. Brendan Gale giving signals to his smaller men, but he didn't get his hand to the ball. Capuano beat him down to Armstrong. A high ball close to the boundary line. Turner punches straight to North. Rock, of all people, short pass to Roberts. And this should be a North Melbourne goal. And Rock, from Richmond's point of view, the worst of all people to get it. Now Roberts, 30 metres out, kicks the goal. Puts it in front for Gale. Fairly did well, caused the spoil. Then the crumb, and a wonderfully weighted kick down to Carey. That's his first mark for the game. So Callaway's done a great job. Pumps the ball back, deep inside 50. Big pack of players, Danilchenko. Gets it off to Crocker, and he boots goal number four. So Rock on 50, Scott, ball ricochets back to Crocker, kicks a high ball into the pocket, and over the top, Stanilchenko! Well, a natural left footer, the angle should suit, and he's kicked it. With Scholl. Craig Scholl, brilliant. Open forward line. He thumps it long. Freeborn at the back. Carey in front. They crash to ground. Crocker playing the role of Rover. Back to the goal square. Carey! The king. You can't keep him out forever. Right in front. 15 metres out. He's got it. With him is Burke. Well done, Jason Danilchenko. Well done, McKernan, to thump the ball on 20 metres. Carey dishes off to Roberts. Roberts gets it going north way. A further tap to Bell. Bell back. Oh, this is great play. Stevens kicks the goal. Any thoughts that the north forward line had suffered through the untimely loss of the champion Longmire was dispelled as Pagan's men cut Richmond to ribbons. North by 55 points. McKernan the star. He's on 50. So Roberts is at the back of the pack. Harrison. It's been taken away by Scott and he's kicked the goal. I suppose that was one of the best games that we did, did play for the year along with uh, a few other games, but I suppose that sticks in our mind as one of the best games we did play for the year. Darren Crocker played very well. I, I suppose it um, maybe Richmond underestimated our um, fall line a little bit. And Darren Crockett sort of bobbed up and kicked five goals, and that, that's sort of what, what Paul testament to our year when you've got guys like Craig Shaw and Darren Crocker and Mark Roberts kicking goals. It's not sort of the so called superstars doing a lot of work, but when you've got guys like that sort of chipping in, kicking their three and four goals, it makes a huge difference. Friday night at the G, under those lights. Against the struggling Fitzroy, North were again a powerhouse. The Lions had no counter to Wayne Carey, he'd kick six goals. He'd take a dozen marks and flex his muscles at will. Doesn't kick many, he's got that. Stevens running away, delivers in the direction of Carey. Could get a good bounce, he does. Would he go left or right? Goes to the pocket with a beautiful kick. That's a wonderful kick from Carey to find Roberts. Kicks from 50, Roberts, great looking kick. He's hammered at home. But Archer has backed himself, coming away from his opponent, forced it forward. Anthony Rock, little kick, not bad. Carey, he should get the distance. It's a lovely kick from a standing start by Carey. He's got the goal. Yes. White goes across the half-back line. And the ball taken away by Holmes. McKernan, strong again. Oh, gets past. He'll go for goal. This will bring the house down if he can kick it. Carey across the face. And unselfishly kicks it back for Rock. So Rock to kick the goal straight over the goal umpire's head. 
Armstrong down to Blakey. Blakey out of the centre, McKernan underneath it. With him, Paxman. Now Carey can attack the goal from 48 metres. Wonderful kick. Vintage Carey. McKernan again dominated. He would win three more Brownlow votes for another best on field performance in a 105 point win. Despite being rubbed out, the umpires continue to recognise his excellence. With his 14th possession, could kick his first goal. He's put it through. Oh, yeah, I suppose out of all the three votes that I probably did collect in the, in the Brownlow medal, um, that was probably the most surprising one. That, I thought, well, maybe I played, played all right, but when I heard that um, Primus, Primus had picked up one vote, I, was, I thought, well, no, I won't get votes in this game, then won't care, he got two, and then it was a bit of a surprise when I sort of, when they read it out that I got three, but um, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was a pretty hard game to play in, actually, because because of Fitzroy and the sort of their plight with their financial situation, and um, the side as itself it wasn't really sort of playing with much spirit. Um, for us to sort of come down from playing all those big games, you know, like the Richmond games and the Carlton and the Collingwood games, it, it is a very, very hard game to play. State of Origin weekend saw five North players at the highest level. In the match between Victoria and the Allies at the MCG, McKernan would run. Stevens would gather 21 possessions. Archer came in to replace Ablett and kick three goals. Wayne Carey was a late withdrawal from the Allies' side. But his North teammate, Mark Roberts, stepped in. He'd grab 16 kicks. In Adelaide the next day, Dean Laidley would represent the West as they fell by six goals to South Australia. It was at this stage that North decided to tie Corey McKernan up for the next three years. Um, the contract's sort of insequential in the end. Like, as long as you're playing well, I think the club are always going to keep you around. But it, I suppose in the end, it is nice to have that security like at the back of your mind where you know, you've, you, know that, you know that you've got that money secured, so it is pretty good. After McKernan and Carey had dominated the first half of the season, it was time for some of the other young North players to grab the limelight. Against Footscray under lights in round 10 at the MCG, Jason Danilchenko took his turn. He'd kick five goals in a most impressive performance. And the little kick finds Roberts closer to the centre of the ground. He goes short. It's Simpson. Simpson's kick in towards full forward. At the back, Danny Southern. Danilchenko. Stand up. And Danilchenko does and kicks a goal. Ricochets away from Scott for the moment. Tries to draw the man. King normally breaks these tackles. He does on Dimitin and then punches forward. Crocker timed it beautifully. Just used his hands for balance on his opponent. And a goal in front but they've wasted a few. Kicks from about 48 metres. Looks good. He's got it. Poor kicking stopped this game, being a one-sided route in the first half. The Roos kicking five goals from 16 scoring shots till the long break. A 20-point margin saw them retain top spot on the ladder. For once, Corey's name was not on the Brownlow sheet. For two votes, read David King. Just runs those precious few metres, doesn't he, to make it uh, penetrating at half forward. Carey into Denilchenko, knocked away by Southern. Goes after the foot, he's tackled, he's just locked up completely. Now the hand pass goes back to, is it Anderson, was it? Snapshot for goal, it's a goal. Many people refused to accept the proposition that Sydney was a power side in the making in 1996. At Optus Oval in round 11, the Swans put on a show. Down by 16 points at quarter time, they never looked back. There was no answer to the might of Tony Lockett, who'd kicked 10, or the cool of Paul Ruse, who was celebrating his 300th. Little did we realise that the 79-point loss would be evaluated and re-evaluated many times in the lead-up to the 1996 Grand Final, the next time they would meet. He's in top gear. Kicks long. Oh, this is a great kick to kick it. Great play, Swans. There would be a further test a week later at the MCG. Sheedy's Bombers in front of 40,000 fans. Once again, the North Ford line showed its flexibility. Nine separate players contributing to the scoreline. A 22-point win, making it 9 from 12. David King, best of field. North away again. Lately, runs through centre wing, 
Kicks to half forward, carries the target, and he takes it on the chest. If he's accurate, North will hit the front. He's kicking from 47 metres. It's a drop punt. It looks pretty good, and North have hit the front. Boundary throw in. Over the top, Crocker kicks on his left foot. Great goal from Darren Crocker. The margin 12 points. And just over five minutes to go. But Kernan wins that important tap again. To Crocker. Goes forward to Archer. Kicks from just inside 50. Oh, that's a good kick. That's a great kick. Oh. It's probably good for me personally to have a good game at that stage because I hadn't probably played that well for a while. and. You know, you need to sort of keep your name up there to sort of get a regular spot at North, and um, that's why we're such a probably such a good club because there's such a lot of pressure around around your spot. So uh, I mean, it was, you never really know whether it's your year or or what as far as the premiership goes. I mean, you've got Geelong, and they probably should have won it the last two or the three times they were there. But uh, I mean, the way it's worked out, it's been fantastic. Memories of the last trip to Perth resurfaced when North took on Fremantle on the night of Saturday, June 29th at the Wacker Ground. Again, North's inaccuracy took its toll. 4-9 at half-time. 3-10 in the third term. But the defence of the Roos stood firm and Pagan and his team went on to win by 16 points. Amongst the outstanding players on a cold old night, Glenn Archer. Simpson, round his body, towards Roberts. Oh, he recovered nicely. Oh, well can done. He I kick a goal. The goal. Yes, he can. Pressure now suddenly on the Dockers as Clement tries to get it towards his teammate in Delaney. He lost it. Roberts held it for a fraction too long. It gets it away. This could be another one. Archer takes the hand pass from Dwyer. And North is suddenly clear. Almost had his head ripped off. He's recovered. He puts them inside 50. Who's going to be first? Archer again. This could be another one. And it is for North Nolan. Oh, I started off at full back on uh, Kingsley Hunter, I think it was, and uh, so, stayed there for a quarter and a half. And we uh, they beat us actually the first couple of quarters. And uh, Dennis changed the team around and threw me down in the forward line. And I was lucky enough to pick up a couple of goals. And with that, I got a, some votes as well on the brown line. For Wayne Schwash, though, the game would linger. Defence at the moment. Schwash, Schwash, oh, he's he's got got Yes! Wayne Schwass walked straight into the tribunal room and pleaded not guilty to the charge of biting Fremantle's James Clement despite what appeared to be damning video evidence. Umpire Chris Mitchell told the tribunal he believed the bite was deliberate. But North produced the Frio doctor's report that confirmed there were never any marks or blemishes on Clement's arm. Then in a surprise move, the ruse called in a neurosurgeon who explained how Schwass had simply clenched his teeth and unintentionally caught the hair on the docker's arm. The tribunal agreed there was no deliberate bite, clearing the North wingman. You know, they have four and five year old kids walking up here, calling you a biter. I know I'm pretty jovial taught sort of thing, but it uh, doesn't sort of sit well with me, so I'm just glad it's over and glad to be back. The Supreme Test, Carlton back at the MCG under lights, just as they had been in the preliminary final in 1995, a night that had to be avenged. Retribution was sweet for the Roos. A six-goal third term blew the game apart. North running players in total command. On the last line of defence. Hasn't he had a year? Although Rock will come over the top and take this one. From 40 metres out, directly in front, kicks a goal. Handball away, freeborn. Away to Armstrong. Armstrong's kicked towards full forward. McKay away from Archer. Stevens, left foot snapped by Stevens. North Melbourne are in front. Gives it away towards Stevens. Ripped up the ball as he took the kick. Meets the 50 metre line. Listen, it came steaming out. Gets it across towards Rock, who finds Archer. Another one is across to Blakey. Blakey is 25 out. He shoots towards goal and puts it through. For Steve Kernahan, in game number 200, a skipper, it was a sign of things to come. 12 goals to six in the second half saw North Melbourne win by 55 points its biggest over the Blues in 13 seasons. Wayne Schwass, the man of the moment, had something to prove himself. He was voted the best player of field. Smothered by Silvani off uh, Carey. It's still going to go over. Carey to the goal from Roberts. Who's kicked it? Roberts has got a goal. He's kicked it six inches. There's a big spoiler. 
Schwoss takes the mark. Danger here. They've got players loose everywhere. It's becoming too easy. Freeboard. Yes! Yeah, it had been a long week and, uh, you know, something that I'd prefer to forget because it was a pretty serious allegation, but uh, things worked out for me and uh, I went out with a pretty positive attitude and, uh, you know, things worked out really well. One of those rarities these days, an MCG match on a Saturday afternoon. 34,000 there to see the Roos play Collingwood. And what a match of contrasts. Dead level at quarter time. A point the difference at half time. North just looked on in the second half as the Pies, who'd been languishing in 13th position on the ladder, unleashed with 15 second half goals. Down by 61 points, but the form pundits a hard one to explain, as Collingwood had lost eight straight. No one can take the mate that was listening. It's now Rock on his left foot. Great goal of the Kangaroos. The old firm back together and in sensational form under the MCG lights on a Friday night against St Kilda. Carey and McKernan. Carey, eight marks, five goals to make it 50 for the season. McKernan, eight marks, 11 hitouts and three goals. An 89-point victory. And for the second time in the centenary season, McKernan had been best afield against the Saints. McKernan quite simply gets North Melbourne's fifth goal. Taps it back. Young court. Players try and go off the ground. Falls to Armstrong. Has a player in the square in Kerry. And Kerry kicks his third for the quarter. Just really swings it round. And Scholl takes a very courageous mark coming back. Yes, well done by Craig Scholl. He moves it on quickly too. Kicks it high in towards oh. half four. Terrific mark taken by McKernan. He will get the distance. He's only 45 metres out. Closer than that. 35. Good kick. The goal umpire doesn't move. Goal to McKernan. The single most impressive solo performance of the year. This was Wayne Carey at his very best. Enjoy the King. North Melbourne forward inside 50. Carey. And coming around Scholl. Kicks it long. Crocker. But oh. beautiful mark to Carey. Punched away Ingerson. Simpson went without the footy. Hopgood burst his way through. But intercepted by that man Carey. And he's done it again. So little boy Bell. Puts it on its way, it wafts in the front of goal, Carey! Crocker comes out wide, guess who? Carey, uh, Longwise kicked 14, so he's got a long way to go. Rock spins around, pushing and shoving in the goal. Carey! <laughs> Ops goes off the ground, bursting through King. King from 40 metres out, wobbles, and Dwayne Carey. So now he's yeah, I played centre half back though. <laughs> <laughs> so here he goes for nine, a personal best. And does it easy. They run hard. Now they go long. Carey one on one. You'd think again. Yes. This night he'd kick 11 goals, take 15 marks, and leave no doubt in the umpires' minds about the three votes. North by 113 points and back on top of the ladder. By the way, McKernan snipped in with five goals, and his stats showed 11 marks. But the king was supreme. Goes a goal, and Corey's got his fifth. I remember getting to seven, and I've never kicked more than seven, and uh, I was happy to kick eight. That's, that's about, all I was, uh, about all I was happy with. But I just think that the whole team on that particular night, and we've had trouble with Melbourne over the last you know, three or four years that I've been associated with the club, and, uh, you know, to come out there and, and the back line and the, and the on ballers to deliver the ball the way da they did uh, made it easy for us bikes up forward, I think. Kerry again dominated in the round 18 clash with Hawthorne. The skipper booted seven to take his tally to 68 for the season. McKernan kicked three. Archer produced one of his memorable games for the year, kicking three goals too. North by 31 points. Kerry 23 in three rounds. Two great players. Half forward looking for McKernan, North Melbourne into attack and they get another one. The Desert, Simpson, long kick, two out, Carey, did he give it the slip? He did, bang! Great play from a champion! So Brett Allison, one goal in the third, and that's about it, but now it's Archer's turn to pick up another one. They're going to be hard to beat, Rex. <laughs> and poor Kenny Judge. I know how you feel, mate. 
Archer has two. Now three. Beaten by Salmon, but Rock of Jabralda for North Melbourne inside 50. Allison fell over, but Collins is there. Allison to carry! Bang! Thank you, Mother, for the rabbits. Uh, yibbity yibbity. That's all, folks. The Roos lost top spot in round 19. A disappointing three-goal defeat by Brisbane at Optus Oval. May get another opportunity as they try and surge it towards the goal line. North have got the numbers. North have got the area, and North have got the first goal. Gow is in best position, hands to it, couldn't hang on. This is Clark, back inside the 50, it comes once more. Down towards McIver, there's an opportunity for him on the right foot. Yes. Bounces at goal, but it's good. To Adelaide, and another tough pre-finals encounter. The Crows had a sniff of September and led the ruse by a kick at the last change. What a final turn. Only one goal kick by King Carey. The ruse by six points. Then came the AFL Tribunal. Carey on a charge of striking. It goes out towards half. Oh! Swash! <laughs> Freaking flyer points. Wayne Swash has taken a beauty and got 50 metres in the bargain. Traditional North Melbourne play under Dennis Pagan. Stevens, gee, he works hard, doesn't he? Carey runs at it and has been paid. Kicks from 35 and makes no mistake whatsoever. Carey had his number taken for striking Adelaide's Jason McCartney during the first quarter of Saturday night's game at Football Park. He's been found guilty on five previous occasions and suspended for six matches. North's late season form was causing worries. The Roos had not won four matches in a row all season. Against Geelong on the Friday night, they trailed at each change. The final margin would be 13 points. Here's a go, Daniel Stevens, first goal in league footy. Look at this, 40 metres out, the kids kicked it. North Melbourne went into the final match of the home and away season against Richmond in fourth place on the ladder. A win was vital to be assured of hosting a home final. At the last break, the Roos led by two points. Carey was superb. He took 13 marks, kicked three goals. Craig Scholl was making the most of his time in attack. He'd kick five. A nine-goal final quarter gave the Roos one of their most crucial wins of the year. It pushed them back to second spot. Accurate kick. Six for North. A key, beaten this time, McKernan, knocked it out wide. Knights worked off it well by Bell, who goes down towards half forward, pulls it back, two on one, pushes oh. it back, unnoticed. Scholl aided by all of that, snaps, that's very close. I think it's good. It's a goal. He's lifted. A champion player. Oh, North aren't out of this, don't worry. He kicks the full forward, and look at that. This for his 20th of the season. He's got it. Bell gets the hand pass out. Allison spears it beautifully. Carey over the top. And here's a start for North Melbourne. First goal, final quarter. North Melbourne in control. Passes towards Scholl. Does it beautifully. Here they go again. There's another one, is it? Bang. I am now Brent Allison. Welcome to the goal scoring spree. The AFL would name two of the great teams. Keith Gregg named on the wing in the team of the century. And three North players named All-Australian. Wayne Carey, the vice-captain at centre-half forward. Corey McKernan in the ruck. And Glenn Archer as an interchange. After the 22 home and away rounds, Anthony Stevens came in with the most kicks. The little left footer had gathered 342. Carey had taken the third most marks, 167. McKernan was sixth in the hit-out stakes and Carey fifth on the goal kicking behind Locker. Carey kicking 75 goals. Entire down in front, Roberts. Bell is that a good term. Hurriedly onto the boot. Carey favoured by the kick. To the finals. The Cats and the Roos back at the MCG again. This time in the daylight. This time it would be all North Melbourne. McKernan dominated the rucks. In an inspirational first quarter, he had seven kicks, took seven marks, and placed his imprint on the game. The Cats never recovered. Oh, well played, terrific skill by Scholl. Back it comes to Barnes, tried to be a little bit too fancy. 
Carey receives from the Kernan. Brett Allison, another one, yes. Allison was on fire around the goal front. He'd kick seven. First to recover. Will he give a hand pass or will he have a shot? On to Allison again. Great hand pass. Allison in the goal and has kicked it. Cats almost roll with their backs to the wall. Now Freeborn from right half forward. McKinnon can't catch him, so he's got to be quick. Allison again. Free kick. The advantage. Allison for number five. 15 metres out. And he's dumped it. Front was Simpson. Now Bell. Can he make amends? Allison's kicked five. Onto the left foot. That may bounce through. It has. He's got number six. Now, here's Stevens. Driving it in the direction of McKern, and the big fist comes from Barnes. Here's Scott. Robert Scott keeps it low. And I think it's another one. Yes. Martin nullified Gary Ablett and had the press querying the very future of the great man. And Carey was just Wayne Carey. 14 kicks, 9 hand passes and the usual bevy of 10 marks. North by 10 goals. Ellison, Ellison brings it in towards... Oh, they've stopped and looked at each other, the Geelong players. Here's Craig Scholl, this will cost him a goal. Around the corner goes Simpson. Oh, don't tell me he's kicked that, I think he has, yes. So King again does the kicking in. Again favours the member stand side here at the MCG. Carey, good use of the body to get rid of his opponent, McGrath. Chips oh. it up towards midfield. Finds Shaw. A little give back to the skipper. Won't lose him any votes. Across Sanderson. Allison. Can he be first to recover again and get seven? Freeborn gives it over. Schwoss is going to kick this goal. In he goes. Bang. Again, North Melbourne go forward as McKernan got it down to Rock, here's Freeborn oh they've got good players everywhere in North Melbourne as Freeborn brings it in towards full forward, a loose ball again and a handball back towards the line Allison, yes, yes. goal number seven. seven a week off, but then a tragic start to the match against Brisbane McKernan had been on fire when he fell awkwardly and was taken from the field late in the first quarter, the crowd at the MCG was stunned he would briefly reappear, but the report of a corked knee didn't quite gel. North opened as they had against Geelong. There were no finals nerves in front of the 67,000 fans. Just eight goals to three. Carey was inspirational. Plays on from half back. North keen to get it on in a hurry. Carey their target. Started brilliantly their champion. At centre wing, now cool to go, happy to do so. Kicks to centre half forward with a long one. Bill should have taken the mark. Roberts is handball. Scott normally a good kick for goal. He's drilled. There's a space of about 80 metres between a North Melbourne player and the Brisbane goal behind King. King pops it up, wanting McKernan. Goes over the top. Oh. Here is handball. Fantastic. Roberts is going another one. The last six goals of the match, North. They lead 7-3 to 2-1. Absolutely dominating this first preliminary final. Lapham got an order for good bounce. He has to go back and get it again. Tackle on him was uh, affected by Roberts. Roberts runs away. Strides to 55. Floating ball. Carey again. King to Martin. Good kick. Very penetrative. Roberts away at half-back. Having an excellent match. That's a floating kick, not easy. Scholl attacked it with confidence and quickly kicks the 4-4. The bounce, interesting, over the top, and surely Allison gets his first. Rock will take this mark and run on immediately. Carey wants it short to the pocket. It hangs in the air, but he's so good overhead. 58 to 21, north in front. This to increase the lead. Wayne Carey. So good. It spills across to McLean, falling to the ground. He gets it to Lambert. 60 metres out, down towards full forward. Lynch surrounded. What a terrific mark by Archer. Lambert's high ball to centre half forward. Lynch, Martin winning everything at the moment. Pushes forward. Lambert wanting a free kick. 
Blakey off the ground. Hasn't had many touches, but boys, he stopped them. Rock to Stevens. Out wide to Capuano. Capuano kicking in the direction of Scholl. In the pocket. Crocker tries to get a back dust to Scholl, and he kicks another one. Again. Well, what do you say? Out to 52 points now. 85. 23, in fact 62, that's what you say. Capuano knocks it down. Away comes Freeborn. Easily out of the pack to Harford and Carey. Carey on the lookout, pulls it back towards the middle. Shaw again. He put at 21 goals in eight years. Might get more in this term the way he's going. Three for Shaw. All in this corner. Archer's kick back to about centre wing. Carey, brilliant. Dominating this game with 10 marks. Scholl on the lead. Dick Foss gets back. Ball comes to ground. Scholl's little give. And Crocker's going to kick another one. His second. Chris Scott, 55 metres out. Centering kick. Martin should have got a free kick. Gee, he was courageous. Laidly. Scott, good handball. Needs the bounce now, Capuano. Can't quite get the handle on it. Freeborn helps. North should get away. Well played. Terrific handball to Roberts. Roberts through the centre. There's a bounce. Always dodgy in that centre square area from 75 metres out. Long kick. Carey watches it bounce. Three for a goal. Well, he could have marked it. Glenn Archer. A feisty customer. Tosses the ball in the air. Final siren, and after seasons of frustration, North Melbourne will play in a grand final. In the final term, North eased back a cog, and Brisbane closed the gap ever so slightly. It would be a 38-point win, and a red carpet ride into the first grand final since 1978. But first, the biggest footy week of the year. I declare James Hurd and Michael Voss the joint winners. The Brownlow medal. And while Voss and Hurd celebrate, Corey McKernan sits at home, a lonely sight. He polled 21 votes too, including six best on grounds, but was of course ineligible. A crushing blow. He was the centre of intense media speculation. Pagan would clear him. He would play. Friday was the grand final motorcade. And then the big press conference, captains and coaches side by side. Dennis Pagan letting out few secrets. I'll probably go down and uh, go home and have probably lunch with my wife and uh, probably take my dog for a walk tonight and uh, bounce all my uh, tactics off him and see what he says. Uh... Come back in time. To before Menzies, before the world wars, and Farlap, to before Federation, come back a century, and the very beginnings, the birth, not just of this great game, but of this great day, back then, it belonged to Melbourne, to Victoria. Now, in every possible and in every improvable way, it's Australia's day. It's about yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's the ghosts of guys with football the biggest part of their name. It's the showmanship, the spirit, and the skills of Bunton, Kazali, and that man, Captain Blood. Now passed down to the young and the clever, the great and the game. It's the power of flight without wings, of putting balls on strings and crowds on feet. It's fact and fantasy. All at the very same time, on the very same stage. 
Welcome to the eternal tradition that is Australian football's greatest day. Where the first hundred years were only yesterday. And the next century begins and ends at first light tomorrow. From the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Seven Sport welcomes the world to the AFL Centenary Grand Final between North Melbourne and the Sydney Swans. Thought about going short again to Shannon Grant. Now Alex to go inside, back in towards the middle. The big ask for Dunkley, who's got to beat a couple. Well, it bounces in his favour. His kick is a poor one, however. Straight onto the chest of Stevens. He goes wide. This could be costly. On the outer side, it's Capuano just forward of centre wing. Deep in towards Crocker and Terry. And it's Crocker. It's been a handy option down in that forward line this season. That looks like his 18th goal for the year. And Gorka on the board. But Dunkley appears to be OK. That's good news. O'Loughlin again. Delightful hand pass is all right. Ruse short kick. Doesn't travel a great distance. Well trapped by Corey McKernan. Maxfield almost had him. It'll finish with Laidley. He's 55 metres from home. Kicks in towards half forward. North need a mark. They haven't got it, but they've got the players waiting down. Allison, he loves a goal. And he's got one for North Melbourne. Belts the ball wide to centre wing. Chapman out here. Again, a fickle bounce. Back to Chapman. Road one. Back to Ruse. Ruse measures the kick. Well done. Maxfield on to Grant. Is a left footer. Decided not to go. Mooney. Handball over the top. Maxfield at 48, 46, 45. Centering kick. The right thing to do. Luff's got it. Couldn't hold it. Probably should have. And he's going to be paid. Struggled for six seasons. Finally making his mark. Can he kick a goal in the grand final? Lockett likes it, it's through. Paul Ruse in picture there has already had 10 possessions. Had a quiet week last week, here's a snap. Lord the hot, there's another one to him. Another lead change here, 3-2 three, to 3-1. Three, Great play, Allison to get it to Stevens. Dyson out of the centre, beautifully done. Maxwell could go a long way here. Kicks the ball to Luff, he's got him. Just inside 50, angle about 45 degrees. He's kicked it beautifully again. Stafford McKernan. Stafford at the back, start of World Stafford. Kelly, well done to Bayes. Bays away to Grant, fantastic kick to Mooney who can thump the ball from a long way. He's going to go to Luff, very wide, he's got him. Well, why can't he go back and kick another? Except he's going to go on, he's got a man all on his own, in the pocket to Bays. Bays plays on the lock and another one. Great play. Rocks kick it half back to centre wing. Crocker, Carey coming in from the side, well played though, Bays to Dyson, to Creswell. It's happening for Sydney at the moment. Mooney, a good contest with Fairley. Lewis with a chance, well played. Lockett in the box seat as he can't work to the front. Martin with him, played Lockett. Played Tony, left foot goal. Sensational. Bays quickly on. Stafford's had an excellent start. Kelly's on. If he can deliver, decides to handball to Creswell. Still Kelly's on. Creswell decides to go long. Mooney the target. Fairly gets back. Mooney pushes him out. Has an opportunity to kick a goal. Goes for it and drills it. What about this? All too easy. So he hasn't come off for the blood. Capuano's off again. So Dennis Pagan unhappy about the balance. Luck well done. Kelly said he kicked the lock and couldn't quite get there. There was a wasted opportunity. The up eyes down behind play. Martin away. Sydney giving that one up. Good kick, Mickey Martin, to Blakey. Blakey quickly on to Scott. No, decides to go long. Carey the target versus Dunkley. Carey front spot. Play on North got a free kick. Roberts well played. Handball over the top. Carey trying to crash his way through. Alla Here's, Rock. Here's an opportunity. Good snap. Goal. Free ball. You can feel a swing here. Shoal a long way from home. Kicks to the spot that North likes so much. Carey the target. Lewis, free board. He's a good kick. He's already kicked one. Round the body. He's got another. They're back. 
Sydney led by 25 points at one stage in this quarter. North's got it back to 11. Stafford front spot. Chapman will play to Garlic. Garlic quickly onto O'Loughlin. Brilliantly done. O'Loughlin's give us excellent to Maxfield. Oh, wonderful kick to Lockett. Brilliant football. Kicks his fourth. Baser's kick. Still on the ground there, uh, Kerry. Now he says he's OK. Baser's kick was wide. Went to Archer. Archer delivers beautifully to Bell. Had a couple of touches since coming on. Inside to Laidley. Runs his full measure. Kicks the ball to set a half or Good kick. Quite the front spot. Went into the ground. Taken by Allison. He's normally a good kick. He's got another one. Well done. From the middle. With just three quarters of a minute remaining. Desperate times as Creswell loses it. Popped over the top and slapped by McKernan. Inside 50. Rock was there. Blakey was there. Freeborn is there. Around his body goes Freeborn. And here comes North Melbourne. The bounce is favouring David King of North. He gives it to Freeborn. Freeborn gives it away once again towards Laidley. A hurry kick is high. They've all got to stand and wait and let Kerry come over the top. Delivers. They've got numbers north. Crocker sets himself. Front man, no show. They were both positioned. It's been a revelation this year as a goal kicker. He's got it. That's the one they wanted. Sydney now feeling the heat. He goes into the middle. Duckley got a hand to it, but that was all. Maxfield, the flyer, is through the centre. Stewie Maxfield's away. He wants Lockett desperately, and he's got it. It's not a difficult kick. It is as far as pressure is concerned. He's OK. Back in the centre. Stafford, Stevens out of the centre. 10 13 9 5, Blakey to Rock. North dangerous again. Attacking at Roberts. Bell has done well at 50. Centering kick to the front of the goals. Oh. Is it going through for goal? Is it touched? I don't think so. It's a goal. Mighty war around the ground for the Kangaroos. Roberts lays it down. Crocker snaps it. A centre kick in the centre half four. Drop by shot. Had it spent before he got it. Kick it. Lightning hands to Maxfield. In towards the centre. The bouncing ball eludes the ball. Except one. Back towards kick it again. Ripped into the ground. A cry of ball by the North fans. Anderson goes over the top. Anthony Rock. He's 55 out. He's done a 360. Back to Anderson. Off to Shoal. Can go over the top. He does to Stevens. Stevens can just about seal up the North. the ball to half forward. Kerry and Dunkley. Seymour after it. Still after it. Kerry worries him out of it. The captain kicks it beautifully to Rock. Rock at 50. Takes his man on. 48 metres out. Kicks the goal and drills it home. And they're home. Official attendance today, 93,102. Fantastic. Wonderful atmosphere as McKernan tries to storm his way through. He gets caught, but he's got plenty of support. Here's Roberts. Roberts for goal! And Roberts has sealed it for North Melbourne. Dyson over the top. Lewis gets the hand pass away to kick it. He's still outside 50. Had it, lost it, regained it. Pumps it long! Pumps it high!
unfortunately this is not far off the mark once again this year kick it leaves it for O'Loughlin around his body swings the youngster and he kicks a wonderful goal the North Melbourne chart has gone up they know they're home Simpson it's high it's good it's a great goal to Simpson Creswell has run himself ragged Rue still trying kick it against the flow Rock has been so good all day. McKernan, so strong and powerful, kicks it forward to Scholl. Inventive there, Scholl. Goes for goal. Inside the 10, could carry No, it's fairly coming down. And could he just top this off with the last goal of the centenary grand final? He celebrates as well. The big mark, Ian Fairley goals. And at that moment, Dennis Pagan knew his side had won the 1996 AFL Grand Final. Australian Football Video presents... The best gift idea in a hundred years. One hundred years of Australian football on video. The complete history of the game for only $34.95. Plus, centenary celebrations. All the action and celebration of the AFL centenary year for only $24.95. Or buy them both in the special centenary double pack and save $9.95. At these stores now.